how many persons are in bondage right now mental bondage because of this very same thing someone has touched them inappropriately and instead of persons becoming grieved grieved by doing something physically and also spiritually or both people are keeping silent when it could have been you when it could have happened in your house why are we so silent when there are some 15 year olds who can't sleep at night because in their minds is the replay of the night they were touched of the night they were sexually abused there are 10 year olds 11 year olds who don't know how to express themselves to their parents and sometimes when they do speak to parents parents keep silent parents do nothing parents begin to compromise and are still compromising instead parents become grieved oh glory to god i'm on this platform tonight because god has seen the hurt shatarabaha god has seen the pain yes the pain that is being suffered by persons who have been sexually violated there are many adults right now right now many adults who have not yet healed they haven't healed from the incident I'm not asking you I'm telling you it happened way back when from they were children it happened when they were in their teens and they still have not gotten over it whenever they hear even the word the R word they are troubled in the spirit I'm not here to cause you to go over those feelings but I'm here to tell you that because God has realized how prevalent these incidences have become and the impact the mental impact and bondage they have caused in the lives of his people he has sent me here tonight to pray for your healing and deliverance you might not be one of those persons hence the reason we had extended the invitation for you to extend to others because maybe they they the people on your page maybe the people in your contacts they are the ones who need deliverance and that's why we're not keeping this broadcast to ourselves because maybe you were not defiled maybe you were not violated but perhaps someone you know or someone knows someone hallelujah and the list goes on and on who has been defiled the healer is in the room the deliverer is in the room there is a pain there is a pain that some women are carrying and can I say also there are some men men a few men the statistics hallelujah from the National Sexual Violence Resource Center in the US indicate that one out of every 71 men do suffer from this kind of violation in their lifetime so although it's not as prevalent as it is for women there are men too who have been victimized 
Tonight God wants to heal women who have been violated. Men have literally held you down and have touched you inappropriately. And you're still having replays. You haven't healed from it. And you need deliverance. You cannot trust men. It's hard. Because you are yet to get over the violation that a man has caused you. The National Sexual Violence Resource Center has also said that more than 51% of persons who have been sexually violated in the U.S. have indicated that the person who has violated them is someone with whom they are closely associated. So it's not a stranger that is carrying out these acts in most cases. But sometimes our own family members, our own relatives, mommy, hallelujah, they, they want the best for us. They are moving because they do want to give us a better life. But what they're not seeing because they're so desperate for a better life, because they're so... Glory to God, vulnerable. They're not seeing the risk. The risk that comes with telling us to live with an auntie or telling us to live with a grandmother or telling us to catch with a cousin, telling us to catch with an uncle. She's desperate for change and a better life. What she's not seeing is the disadvantage that this better life seeking can cause. She didn't realize that when she put the little girl to live in this house where the two people are married, that when the woman goes to work and the man is there alone, that he's touching the child inappropriately. Do you know how many children are yet to express what they have endured because they know that if they should say it their mothers and their fathers would not believe it they won't believe them they won't believe their stories and so tonight i'm here to introduce the healer the healer wants to heal Persons who have been violated. You were violated to the extent that when you go to your bed, even years later, in this year 2020, you are still seeing the incident. You've been violated. Your mind keeps on replaying the day that guy touched you the day your uncle touched you the day your cousin touched you the replays are continual you're in bondage the deliverer wants to deliver you the healer wants to heal you because he wants you to be able to trust again he wants you to be able to love again he doesn't want you to kill yourself. Behold, he's the God that heals. He's able to supernaturally delete out and edit out that thing about the experience that has caused you the most pain. He is a comprehensive healer. He is a thorough deliverer. And heal, he wants to heal you. So you can finally move on. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Mm, shatarabha saturi bianda. Kasi katomish karianda raba sataya. Hallelujah. Being at the wrong place. Being at the wrong place can cost you. Being disobedient can cost you. It has cost many of us. It has cost some of our parents. In search of a better life, Jacob was apparently still afraid. Still afraid of Esau. So instead of going south with Esau, he went north. So in search of safety, in search of a safe life, this very shameful thing happened to Jacob's child. Similarly, in search of a better life, do many innocent women and men find themselves being sexually violated, totally defiled. Lift up your hands, even as the women stand in the gap, stand in the gap. The Lord wants to heal not only, not only the people who have literally been defiled, but he also wants to heal the families that have been affected. Family members who are hurting over the incident. Lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, mighty God, that you still heal. We thank you, mighty God, that you are concerned with everything that concerns us. Father God, I lift up before you the persons whom you would have strategically, hallelujah, caused to be watching this broadcast who are in need of freedom oh god we thank you father that you are here to address their issues lord god we ask you to roll back the tape Go back to the year. Go back to the month. Go back to the very day and hour when that act took place. Replay. Yes, Lord, in their minds, go back. And as you go back, Holy Ghost, I ask you to find the wound and we hereby ask that as it relates to the persons under the sound of my voice who have wounds caused by such an act that those wounds will begin to be touched touch those wounds right now we release healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I said we release healing now in the name of Jesus. Healing in the realm of the soul right now. Healing in the emotions right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now we speak, we speak to every garment, every mummified garment. That the enemy has...
has used to wrap up these people to make them find it difficult to trust to make it make them find it difficult to love and to share their secrets and stories with others we pray that those garments will become loosened now right now we ask that there be a supernatural loosening that will occur in the lives of these people in the name of jesus christ let them experience freedom again let their minds become free again let their hearts become free again let the thing that causes them pain be supernaturally moved can someone say move can someone say dry it up lord let that thing that brings them to tears ever so often that causes many to feel suicidal that causes many to feel as though they don't want to see tomorrow let that hurt oh god become visited by your love visited by your power visited father god by your restorative virtue heal them lord heal them now we pray in the name of jesus christ they want to worship you like everybody else they want to pray to you freely like everybody else but they are in bondage because the thing the thing is weighing them down and so right now we speak to every weight every weight caused by immorality every weight caused by sexually immoral acts violence sexual violence every weight women and men have been carrying because they've been violated at some point in their lives we ask that you lift those weight we ask that you do an exchange we ask that you will lift their burden and give them yours we ask that you remove their yokes and give them yours for your yoke is easy god and your burden is very light so burden bearer today we ask that you begin to lift off the weight the young woman has been carrying lift off the weight the young man has been carrying lift it off god and even for those who are under the sound of my voice who have found themselves in situations such as the one in which Dinah found herself. God wants you to forgive. He wants you to forgive the people who have violated you. He wants you to forgive them. It's hard, but it is important that you forgive yourself first and then forgive them. And so, Father, I pray that you'll forgive. Teach them how to forgive themselves. Teach them how to stop blaming themselves. And teach them how to forgive the male or even the female that inappropriately touched them. Can someone say, Teach them to forgive. Let every bitterness in their hearts, in their souls, begin to be confronted by your love. Let everything they carry in their spirits that is associated with the incident begin to be confronted by your love and by your peace. Heal your people, Lord. Deliver your people, Lord. Set them free, mighty God. 
Lift them up out of the pit in which they have found themselves. Let them begin to experience love again. Help them to trust again. I pray, Father God, that you will begin to release them out of every bondage. Release, Lord God, everything the enemy has used to arrest them in the spirit. Whatever it is he has used to cripple them, we hereby command a reversal to take place right now by the blood and power of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. We say, be thou loosed, even as Jesus spoke to the woman whose back was bent over for 18 years Jesus said woman thou art loosed I hereby speak this word which shall be established that woman thou art loosed man thou art loosed in the name of Jesus Christ and so now we speak to the demons we speak to the demons responsible because even through this pandemic there are some demons that are on assignment the enemy is sending these demons to homes where the mothers are mostly at work the enemy is sending out these demons into homes where there's very little supervision taking place and so before the act occurs, we must become so grieved in our spirits that we allow the Holy Ghost in us to begin to lift up standards before the acts take place. Do we agree? Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. And so right now, even as you stand in the gap for your different nations. I hereby stand in the gap as a Jamaican in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. We hereby confront every spirit that has been sent on assignment to rape. Every spirit that has been sent on assignment to commit sexual violation. Every spirit from that department that has been released from the second heaven over our island in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, even as the word of God declares that one shall put a thousand to flight and two ten thousand we hereby use chains and fetters of fire to bind up every demonic spirit responsible for sexual defilement we hereby right now command an arrest to take place wherever you are in the different realms we take authority over you we hereby destroy your plot we mash up your plan right now we command torment to occur in you in the name of jesus we command slaughter we command we command stinging, we command poisoning, we command burning, burning from the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let the fire of the living God begin to saturate even the heavens in Jamaica and wherever you live, you can take authority over your country because I know there are incidences that are happening in your country too. And so in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we hereby release fire. Can someone say fire? Fire in the heavens. We burn now every flying spirit that is on assignment to cause defilement. We hereby release fire over volatile communities we hereby release fire over cities we hereby release fire 
right now to burn everything that is on assignment to rape, everything that is on assignment to assault, everything that is on assignment to harass in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, son of the living God. We send fire to your camp. We destroy your artillery right now. We destroy your weapons right now. We strip you of your satanic anointing, you evil spirits responsible for rape. We take authority over you. We say, let God arise. We say you'll be scattered abroad right now. Let the east wind begin to chase you away out of our homes, out of our communities, out of our families. In Jesus' name. We are grieved. I said we are grieved. We are grieved. For you are hurting. And not only are you hurting you demons. But they're causing a wedge to be driven in families. And so even now. We break and destroy the weapons being used by those evil spirits right now. I said we destroy those weapons being used to carry out these assignments. We speak to spirits that operate in darkness. Spirits that get its strength and source of power in darkness. Right now in the name of Jesus we command light to shine upon you. Let there be light in every home that is intended to be plagued by these spirits. Let there be light in communities where these spirits are rampant. Let there be light in countries where the numbers are up. Let there be light in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. And if I were you, I'd begin to cry out for my daughter. See, many of you owe glory to God. In your head, you're there allowing the devil to tell you that you don't need to hear this. Or you don't even know whose name is next on his paper. If I were you, I'd become not just concerned about my own blood, but concerned about the women. My neighbors begin to cry out. Oh, glory to God. Breaking the silence can make a difference. So we cry out today, God. For our young women, we cry out. For our young men, we cry out to you. We say, deliver them out of the sneer of the fowler. Deliver them out of the bird trap of the rapist. Deliver them, Lord, out of the trap of those sent from the satanic kingdom to cause incest. We cancel every spirit of incest right now. In the name of Jesus. Cousin having sex with cousin. Cousins getting pregnant. In the name of Jesus Christ. We hereby break up every bond. Every bond that has occurred between cousin and cousin. Oh glory to God. Brother and sister. Uncle and niece, the blood of Jesus, we shut it down now. Rako Shima Katada Babasa Lika Toreba. It's unholy Ketore Kota. It's ungodly. We mash it up. Can someone say we mash it up now? Hallelujah. And we also break the silence. We break the silence. Too many families are embracing the nastiness. Too many families are hugging up the slackness. Not realizing the pain, the long-term pain. These acts, these immoral acts, these unethical acts are causing in the lives of individuals. Because of what uncle has done. There's a niece who is hesitant to get married. Because of what cousin has done. There is a cousin who cannot trust anyone today. It is a serious issue. Kamara Katara Baba Shandai. 
I speak to the minds of those in bondage and I say, be thou loosed. Oh, my father, even as I stand under this open heaven, I ask that you follow this word, accompany this word with signs and wonders. I am speaking into the atmospheres of some persons who have been sexually defiled. I hereby command freedom to occur. I activate liberty under the auspices of the Holy Ghost through the name of Jesus Christ. I say, be thou loose from the effects and impact of being defiled. Be thou loosed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so now we're going to attack that thing that causes one to feel suicidal. Can we come against suicidal spirits? Hallelujah. I just need one person to come in agreement as we take authority over the spirits responsible for suicide. And so even in every atmosphere in which my voice is being heard, I hereby command that every deaf and dumb spirit responsible for suicide, deaf and dumb, where the people don't want to speak again, deaf and dumb, not even to a professional Christian counselor, deaf and dumb spirit, they don't want to talk to the ministering servant of God, deaf and dumb spirit, you've locked up the mouths of the girls, you've locked up the mouths of the boys, now they're thinking suicide, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth tonight, we release a deluge of fire to burn you and destroy you. You deaf and dumb spirit. We relinquish your power. We blood block your operation. It shall not occur. We oppose by the fire of the Holy Ghost. We decree life. We speak life. We profess life. The people shall live and not die. But decree and declare the works of God in their lives. Can someone say they shall live? Can someone say we shall live? We shall not die. Can someone say we refuse to die? And we refuse to be silent. We have been in silence for too long. Silence must be broken. It is time we become grieved like Jacob's sons. How could you hear? That there is a spirit of rape on the loose. And you're there lying down in bed. At 12 o'clock. When the spirits are entering the homes. Of our young women and our young men. We're fast asleep. We're fast asleep. Can someone say it's time to be grieved? Can someone say it's time for us to be angry? Can someone say it's time for us to be cross, spiritually cross, spiritually aggressive as we take a stance, as we allow a righteous indignation to be aroused on the inside of us against every such spirit. Oh, glory to God. And so today we take authority over Operation Rape tonight. I said we take full authority over Operation Rape. Rape intended for St. Thomas, St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, Hanover, St. James, Manchester, Clarendon, Kingston, St. Andrew, Portland, oh glory to God. We take authority over Operation Rape intended for the parish of St. Mary. We break your legs, you demonic spirits. We hereby strip you of your satanic anointing tonight. Wherever you've gotten supernatural empowerment, we hereby strip you of such. By the blood of Jesus, we smear everything you call holy. Hallelujah. We desecrate your evil altars. I said tonight we launch missile in every operation. What rape in the name.
name of Jesus Christ. Rape. Tonight, we thwart you. Rape. Tonight, we break your neck. Rape. Tonight, we cripple you. Rape. Tonight, we confront you. You shall not enter my family. I don't know about you, but you have a mouth. Represent your family. You shall not touch any of my cousins. You shall not touch my sisters. You shall not touch my brothers. You shall not touch nieces. You shall not. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We shut it down. I said we shut down rape. I said we shut down defilement. Can somebody just begin to be grieved? We say loose, young woman. Be loosed in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of your place of silence. Come out of the pit of being deaf and dumb. Be thou loosed in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak again. Begin to trust again. Begin to love again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. And so... One of the things that we must do is we want to ask God to forgive those who have allowed themselves to be used by this spirit, this wicked spirit. And then we're going to ask God to save them. So we're asking God to forgive the human people, the people in the flesh who have allowed the spirit of rape to take over their bodies causing them to rape and defile and after we pray for forgiveness we're gonna pray for their salvation can we just claim at least 10 men who have raped can we claim them for Jesus tonight because this is what salvation is all about. This is what grace is all about. Can we claim some young men? But let us first ask God to forgive. So Father God, we lift up men. Men in our families. We start with our family members. Uncles, cousins, brothers, nephews who have touched inappropriately father we ask to forgive them can someone say forgive them lord for they know not what they have done forgive them lord i just need two people to beg for forgiveness on their behalf with me forgive every young man that has allowed his body and especially his sexual organs to be used by demons to create hurt in the lives of many. Forgive them, Lord. Forgive them, Lord, for yielding to the desires of the flesh. Forgive them, mighty God, for they did not know what they were doing. They were in it for the moment. They were concerned about the immediate pleasure. But they paid no attention to the long-term pain. Forgive them, Lord. Let a man who has raped be forgiven. Right now. Let one in the prison who's Asking you for forgiveness. Receive forgiveness. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever they are. Let them receive forgiveness. Can someone say, forgive them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Deliver them, Lord. Of their trespass. Deliver them, Lord. Of their iniquity. Deliver them, Lord. 
mighty God, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. And so now, we're going to ask God to save. And so I hereby point out those young men in the downtown area who are planning to battery a young woman tonight. We pray for those young men in East Kingston who are planning to enter, illegally and unlawfully enter the home of a woman tonight. We shut down the operation. Can someone say we shut down the operation? Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Righteousness shall exalt those young men. Sin shall be seen as a reproach. We call forth the spirits of every young man who's plotting and planning to defile sexually. We call forth your spirit to arise in righteousness and holiness tonight. Let righteousness overwhelm those young men. Let the holiness of God begin to overtake the spirits of those young men. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, son of the living God. We shut down Operation Rape. I know you are typing, but even as you are typing, I just want you to utter the words in the atmosphere as we come in agreement. We shut down Operation Rape right across Jamaica, right across the Caribbean. We say Operation Rape. You shall not be successful tonight. Operation Rape. We speak as oracles of God. Operation Rape. The word of God says we shall speak the thing and it shall be established. We hereby command failure to you. We hereby command disappointment to you. Operation Rape. You shall not succeed. But tonight you shall be put to shame. Let them be confounded, dear God. Those spirits that have been assigned. Let their way be dark and slippery. Let them fall into their own traps. Let their spears and javelins ricochet. Let there be a ricochet effect in the name of Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. Can someone say freedom? Can someone say let there be freedom? Let there be freedom in homes. Let there be freedom in communities. Let there be freedom in nations from that spirit. From that spirit. I pray that the people of God and especially the watchmen will rise up and start taking a stand spiritually if we would only begin to take a stance we as believers we in whom our authority or is authority if we would only take spiritual stances you know what would happen a lot of the things that we see manifest in the natural could not and would not have happened. When we talk about breaking silence, we first need to break our silence. Why do you think that in most critical matters, the church is among the stakeholders? Do you not see the emphasis that is placed on the church? Do you not see how often ministers, government leaders call for church folks 
to get involved. It is because even though they don't fully understand the weight of our authority, they know that we can do something about every situation. Because it is not us who do it. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is not I, Paul, who lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. And the life I live now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. They don't fully understand who we are and what it means to be in the world, yet not be of the world. But they know that we possess something that is able to cause change. They know. Watchmen, gatekeepers, it is time you become grieved. Your neighbor's issue is your issue as well. The old woman's issue is your issue as well. That man's issue is yours as well. We got to take a stance. We got to take a stance. There's too much wrapping up and embracing of nastiness and slackness. We are living in an era where people are calling on holiness, holiness. Unrighteousness, righteousness. We got to speak up and speak out. We got to take a spiritual stance. Because if we don't, the thing that seems as though it is far away might very well come into our homes. No one is exempt. We are now in a time and season when the hearts of men are desperately wicked. The hearts of men have waxed cold. Men have become lovers of themselves. They're only concerned with their own motives and agendas. They don't care about anybody else. The people of God must therefore arise. The people of God must therefore cry out and become grieved about the things that affect our neighbors. Who is our neighbor? They're not only the people who live next to us, but we want to treat everyone as our neighbors. The Lord said to his disciples, this is how they'll know that you are my disciple. When you treat each other with love. Let us begin to love each other so much that we are concerned with each other's problems and burdens. Our brother's pain is our pain. Our brother's joy is our joy. Father, we pray that healing will come to family members that are grappling with the aftermath of these shameful activities. Do heal them, Lord. Remove the pain from the family. Remove the shame from the family. Remove the disgrace from the family. Let the disgrace go. The disgrace will cause the family members to walk with their heads down. The disgrace will cause family members to not have the confidence to look into other people's faces. Because one bad apple sometimes 
seemingly spoils the bunch. And so whatever shame families are having to endure, I pray, Lord, that you'll remove the shame. Can someone say, remove the shame, Lord? Let the shame be lifted by your spirit, by your power. Lift the shame. Can someone say, remove it, God? Move it from their faces. Move it from off their heads. Move it from their shoulders. Lift it up, God. Remove it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. And so, Father, we thank you that you are lifting up standards. For we, your people, have taken a righteous stance against Operation Rape. Operation Sexual Violence. We have taken a stance. We thank you, Lord, that when the enemy comes in like a flood into some person's homes tonight, in rural and urban areas, country areas and cities, when the enemy, through our men and women, enter homes like a flood tonight, your Holy Spirit will be lifting up standards. I speak over every womb that has been defiled. I release healing virtue now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command everything that has been ruptured to become healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything broken to be mended now in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I thank you, Father God, that someone is receiving in their womb deliverance. You are editing out supernaturally editing out information stored in the womb from that day from that day when that treacherous act took place let there be supernatural deletion supernatural editing out supernatural and divine healing divine restoration divine alignment divine fixing right now in the womb in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. We pray for spiritual senses to become activated again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can someone say activation? Activation of spiritual senses in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. People of God, as difficult as it is to hear information on this subject, it is just a reality that we all have to deal with. And God is concerned with everybody's issue. There are some people who are in need of healing because they have heart issues, kidney issues, foot issue, leg issue, and head issue. But God is also interested in those who have emotional issues to be healed. This broadcast is not to please men. It is not a men-pleasing broadcast. And it's not a money-making broadcast either. Hallelujah. It is to heal God's people. It's to deliver God's people. Oh, glory to God. It's not to please flesh and blood. But it's for the movement of the Spirit of God among His people. Hallelujah. This broadcast is not interested in people's monies. It is a shame that people are only interested in hearing the things that make them feel good. Even while their brothers and sisters are crying in their hearts because of the hurt.
different situations have caused them. And so we thank you for this set apart opportunity to allow you, God, through your Holy Spirit to address these issues over which many are silent. Issues that we treat as though they are rare when sometimes they are right in our homes. What did I say? Where they're acting like we're better than the issue when sometimes it is right in our homes. But I thank God for the spirit of truth. Because if we follow flesh and blood, we would never accomplish the will of God. Because flesh and blood has something very prideful about it. There's something about flesh and blood that makes it doesn't want to accept truth. But God forbid, may our proud ways be changed. Because God rejects the proud and exalts the humble. So we thank you, Father God, for healing and deliverance today. We thank you, Father, for mending families that were broken, distraught, distressed, traumatized because of incidences of this nature. We thank you for the example you have set out in Genesis 34, 7. The example, Lord, was portrayed through the lives of Jacob's sons. They were grieved. They were angry. And whereas we're not going to allow the flesh to get the better of us, for we wrestle not against flesh, we shall surely, as of today, become so concerned and become so much of our brother's keepers that we will begin to be grieved and angry ourselves. Hallelujah. The thing is happening around us. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to remain silent? Or are you going to break your silence? Not just physically, but spiritually. And so again, let us pay attention to dreams that we have about dogs. Are there any persons watching this broadcast who have had a dream about dogs recently? If you have... As recent as this week I'd love for you to share that dream with me by typing it in the message the private message um, section on this page sometimes God is communicating pending attacks of this nature and otherwise when you see dogs in dreams People of God, every single dream that you get is important. As foolish as the dream looks, it is important. God communicates to us through many different means, but your dream is one of them. Pay keen attention to your dreams. Paying attention to your dream could probably save the life of your niece. Could probably save the life of your cousin. Could save the life of your child. Could save the life of your mother or father. Pay attention to your dreams. Sometimes God gives us the sign and the warning. And then when we do nothing about it and the thing happens, we become so angry. We're vexed with God. We don't want to talk to God because God was not fair. When if we would look back, there were many dreams in which he would have given us signs and warnings. But we paid absolutely no attention. And so I'm making a special appeal 
to persons who within the last five days you got a dream that had dogs I want you to write me a special message through the help of the Holy Spirit not by my might I've been able to help people understand their dreams this request let me emphasize is only for those who have had dreams about dogs we will deal with the other dreams at another time but the dogs ones I want you to send me a personal message and so for every pending attack we ask you that you will intercept Lord Jesus. If the enemy is targeting anyone in our families or even any of our neighbors and our neighbors' children, we intercede. Can someone say we stand in the gap for our neighbors? We say, Lord, withhold and restrain the enemy. Let not the enemy defile let not the enemy touch inappropriately send deliverance they don't know you they don't pray to you they do not esteem you but that's okay God I stand in the gap for my neighbors for the people who are around me and even as you stand in the gap for your neighbors we hereby ask that every pending attack of sexual assault sexual harassment sexual violence will be intercepted I just need two persons to agree intercept Lord intercept in the name of Jesus Christ son of the living God amen and amen hallelujah so we thank God for what he has done in our midst for showing up yes just Sarah I know I actually know it's true it's true thank you so much Desreen yes we all know it's true hallelujah anybody watching the broadcast for the first time please indicate we will give you a warm welcome uh, welcome to every person watching within the Jamaican diaspora uh, welcome also to persons from Canada I haven't recognized Canada in a very long time but welcome to you and I really hope you guys are enjoying your summer season hallelujah thank you to all the commenters or persons who have been commenting from evening and thanks to those who have been praying with me and for me I really appreciate every prayer every second that you spend in prayer mentioning Shadeen and every second you have spent just to lift up someone who has indicated through the comments that they need prayer we appreciate you standing in the gap thank you so much to every person who came into agreement whether the enemy likes it or not of course we know he hates it we should not have mentioned anything about this matter in his mind the enemy is like how dare we Pity he doesn't know that we're in a season where the people of God are fearless. Can someone say we are fearless? We attack anything, any demon, every, any devil. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We are fearless. Glory to God. And we are taking a stance. People who are fearful can't take a stance, neither physically nor spiritually. You got to be fearless to confront the enemy and his plot against our lives. My name is Shadeen Anglin, and this broadcast is being streamed live from Kingston, Jamaica. Thank you to every person who took the time out of their busy Sunday to watch. Thank you to all the sharers. God bless you. Hallelujah. I look forward to ministering whatever it is the Lord places on my heart on Tuesday at 7.30. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful Sunday evening. God bless you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I see all those loves over there in the right hand corner. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Misha. Have a great night, everyone. God bless you. God bless you.